Hello and welcome to another episode of Classic Restos, continuing to bring you some of the finest classic motoring events in the world. And grapevines. What started out from writing innocent radio comedy many, many years ago and things just got silly. But now it's time to talk about the content on today's show as I cross the ditch once again, this time to visit our Kiwi neighbours just west of Auckland here in New Zealand. There's a little town not far from Auckland where most of the year is pretty quiet and the local residents enjoy a laid back type of lifestyle which is not too hard to find in other parts of New Zealand as well. Now this lifestyle, it may remain, but once a year, this town revs up a little bit. Welcome to the 23rd annual QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. This is it, QMU. Once a year, one of the largest static classic vehicle events to happen in New Zealand. And it's the old story, it's growing larger every year. These showgrounds are spread out. Up to 3,000 vehicles can be found. There's stuff to see outside and there are sheds where there's even more stuff on the inside. There's an abundance of trade and promotional stands, even swap sites, the list goes on. This episode on Classic Restos will give you a chance to have a look and put your toe in the water because there's nothing better than being here, seeing it for yourself. And this is where my job cuts in, to have a look around here, to share with you and see what we can find. Well, there's no better than to start this show, I believe, than a guy here with a car that's made out of bits and pieces. How you doing, Daniel? Yeah, good, thanks, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate, good. Good to see you turn up in this 1961 Plymouth Belvedere. What a car. Yeah, New Zealand new. You can't find them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> mate, so it's probably a good thing you found this one. Yeah, well, um... It's, it, it was well known about um, with a small group of people for quite a few years, but um, you know when the guy who had been holding on to it since I think the the 80s, he was ready to pass on with uh, this car, and my old man got it and mm. built what you see today. It's the type of car that wouldn't really matter if you left it in the uh, Woolworths car park, right? No, actually, funny you say that. I use it every day as my you know grocery getter, and me and my girlfriend drive around town. We're quite well known from in the small town that we're from. I, oh. think it, I think it's just so cool that the car is just so original. I mean, you've got rust in this door over here, looks like bullet holes. You've got a door on the other side that's not lining up. What's the story on the door, Daniel? Oh, um, well, when the car was um, bought, a lot of the parts weren't usable. And um, my old man, when he built it, um, he had this idea of what he called a kaleidoscope car. And every panel had to be a different colour. It's not. It's not. It's a bit toned down from that, um, from his original idea. But I think you know the message has come across, and it's uh, quite good because um, a lot of those um, panels are off cars that would never be used again. So, so why the gap on that back door? What's well, that? Didn't leave the factory like that. What's it off a different year? Is it? Yeah, that's off a 1960 Plymouth. So it's actually got the start of the fin in it. <laughs> <laughs> How could you got to give it to this yeah. guy? I mean, this is just awesome. Now, engine-wise, uh, it didn't sound like a V8 when you reversed up. What have you done with the engine? I know something's been done. No, Fletch. It was a 313 um, Todd Motors Poly, um, which was uh, the Canadian export engine that New Zealand ended up with, same as Australian cars of the time. Um, but my old man, um, he uh, he shunted in with a bit of help from me. A, um, a slant six with the original 904 torque flight transmission behind it, which is a three-speed push button. Yeah, and um, eight and three-quarter diff. Yeah. Well, isn't that amazing? I mean, for those of you that don't know, the Slant 6, that was in Australia, right up to 69 with the VF Valiance. Uh, and, I mean, the eight and three-quarter rear, I mean, you're not going to hurt that. I mean, plenty of big V8s were put in the drive line in, in front of that. Um, now, what's your plans with the car, Daniel? Uh, are you going to keep it as is? You, uh, something's telling me. I mean, I don't know what I'd do with this. I mean, you asked me a question before we started filming. Daniel said to me, Fletch, what side of the car do you prefer? But to me, I look around it, and I don't know. It's, it's the same everywhere I look. Yeah, well... Um the whole plan was to build this car the way it is and I think it'd be a bit um, against the grain to go back and restore it. It'd be a whole lot of lost work. Um, and the car's really 50-50 uh, with the crowds. They either love it or they hate it because, 
you know, you got you got the one group that just loves an original old thing, and you got the other ones that just want to drop it and put 22s on it. And I'm, I don't sit in that crowd. These yeah. classic cars, they are a lifestyle, aren't they? Good on you, Daniel. Thank you. Yeah, great, great to be here. All right, mate. Now listen, look after your car. Oh yeah, right. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> don't let the rust get hold of it. No, no, it's, she's all oiled up. <laughs> and make sure you don't scratch it. Oh, can't promise you that. <laughs> you are watching the sensational 2017 Cumu Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. And you're seeing it first on Classic Restos. Back with more right after this. Time for a beautiful HQ on today's show. Hello, Renee. Hi, Fletch. How are you? I'm good, thank you. That is good. What a beautiful HQ this is. You know what? Apart from the blower out of the top of the bonnet, the interior on this car is sensational, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. So, tell me, what's a, a lady like you getting around in a big bad HQ like this for? Give us the deal on that. Um, I've always been into cars since I was a little girl, so I wanted to have something that was a little bit unique and a bit of fun, so yeah, that's why I have this. The Premier itself, body-wise, is stunning. It's original. Uh, it just takes you way back to the, the early 70s of 1972. It's a moving time capsule, this car. The engine out of the front of the bonnet is just so intimidating for the rest of the car. Yeah, it's a little bit out there. I like to call it my jewellery. Being that I'm a girl, I have some jewellery. Yep. So, yeah, I didn't want something hidden, I suppose, but I wanted to retain the originality of the car, yep. just to be a little bit different. Yep. Most people will obviously modify the whole thing, so, yep. yeah. I mean, again, I love what you've done. You've left the steel wheels on. You've got the original Holden uh, dress rings, uh, the, uh, the dog dish hubcaps. Everything's as per original. Now, we move on to the interior. Now, that's a beautiful red interior. I mean, such good condition. Now, history of the car. What can you tell us about that? Well, Fletch, I'm the third owner. So, yeah, it's um, one old boy owned it before me. He was from Christchurch and he had a few cars. So, yeah, he just looked after them and... I managed to pry it away from him. Renee, thank you so much. Thank Wonderful you. bit of girl power on today's show here at QMU. Thanks so much, Renee, for being on the show. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving on through now with a Combi Microbus, a 1967 model, we have John. How are you doing this morning, buddy? Very good, thanks, Fletch. That's the way, mate. What are you thinking of the event so far? Incredible. Yeah, I've never seen such a huge crowd here before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This it's event, it's getting bigger and bigger every year, and it's a hats off to, to Ken and Desma uh, and, and a team of uh, people that put this together every year. Now, John, you're part of the VW fraternity here today, uh, mm -hmm. the 67 bus behind us. Now, what can you tell us? I have to ask you about the history because I know these, these vehicles have got a massive following. Uh, what can you tell us? Well, I'm the third owner of this. I've had it for 20 years. The previous owner had it for 26 years and he'd toured, um, uh, it had been around America and uh, UK and um, parts of Europe. The restoration process, uh, how much uh, work did you do there? Well, I did a little bit of the work, just putting it back together, but the panel work was uh, done by um, a really skilled guy out at Pukekohe and, and a very good painter out there too. Yep. They're a cool looking thing, aren't they? I mean, yes. it, I mean, it's not about performance and going anywhere <laughs> fast. I mean, these buses were responsible for pretty well every traffic jam on every main road, weren't they? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> no They're kind this, of like a moving chicane, this, weren't they? This, this'll do 100 k's all day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've actually had it up to uh, 75 miles an hour, believe it or not. <laughs> Hang on to your hat there, John. You don't go getting too wild on us, buddy. Now, one thing I must admit, though, what I love about what you guys do, the, I mean, that's a part of the fraternity in most car clubs too but out the back here you've got your stove you're ready you're doing your breakfast I mean it's just one big happy family oh, yes. and uh, that's what it's all about isn't oh, yeah, it yeah 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 we get away on camping trips all the time yeah and all around the country we've yeah. been down the South Island um, practically every other year John thank you for being uh, a big part of uh, this episode of classic restos here at the 2017 Cumu classic car and hot rod festival well done mate well thank you Fletch yeah t a great show thank you I feel a little bit bad filming around inside John's van. I mean, I'm, I'm filming inside his bedroom. Okay. But that's what I love about these vehicles. They are just so versatile. Time for some sporty cordies now. Hello, Alan. How are you going, Fletch? Good, mate. You? Yeah, not too bad. Good. Got to ask you, what's the go with you guys with these Chevy small blocks in Ford Cortinas? Give us the rundown. Oh, uh, well, you know, just be something different and, yeah, 
not go with what you know, you know, so yeah. Chevy, we know Chevy, so, yeah, they're cheap for bits, and, yeah, you know, you get and value for money, so. And why the Ford body? Oh, just little car, yep. big power, so you can't lose. <laughs> I kind of like it. It's not the combination that you wake up of a morning and think of. You don't think of a, a Chevy V8 in a Cortina body. But what you've done here is very nice. The 1980 model over there looks good with its 350. Uh, but tell us about this 68, what you've done here. Uh, yeah, we just purchased it and had a 1600 in it when we got it. And, yeah, it was always the plan to put a V8 in it. So, yeah. It's a really nice car. I mean, I really like it. I mean, it must be a rocket ship. Yeah, no, it goes pretty good. Yeah, it's got about 400 horse, so, yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, Mate. power to weight you can't lose, you Mate. know. For the street, that would be more power than the average person would ever want. Now, uh, Al, looking at the front end, mate, you've uh, got some nice struts in there? Yeah, it's got Subaru struts and the rack and pin steering. Here what struts? Uh, Subaru coil Okay, all right, okay, hang on, I'll stop you there. That is Subaru, <laughs> um, but over here we, we call it Subaru, right? Yep, mm. yep. Yeah, all right. So, but yes, uh, we get hated on a bit for uh, putting Chevs and Fords, but hey, yeah, was, it goes with it, you know. You I was going to ask you that. How, <laughs> how, how do you get on with that? Oh, you just laugh. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I take my hat off in terms of the admiration because, as I said earlier, uh, the uh, Chevy V8 in the Cortina bodies, it's certainly a different way to go. But not only that, you've done it right and they look neat. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing, eh, as long as you do it properly and, yep. you know. You got to look past the haters, and you just oh, you do what you know. Yep, it's your own individual thing, and that's yeah, the beauty exactly. of classic cars, isn't it? I mean, there's no rule book as to what you should do, no. uh, what colour you should paint your car, what combination you should have, and that's the uniqueness of the whole thing. Um, transmission and drive line, which way have you gone there? Uh, it's got a turbo 350 uh, transmission and just a. It's actually got a Falcon diff in it, so we've yep. kept Ford diff in it. Yep. Yeah, so. Yeah. The interior is nice too. I, I like the black interior, and your work in there too, Al. Yeah, just plain and just cut the dash out and auto metered it and yeah, yeah just tried to keep it nice and plain yeah. in there and simple, you know. Okay, and we've got the uh, the girls over there at the moment in front of the 1980, so that's the girls' car. Yep, that's uh, my mate's yeah, girlfriend's car, so yeah. yeah. That's a pretty cool chick's car, having a 350 Chevy in, in that oh, Cortina. Yeah. yeah, something, you know, yeah. yeah. Got to get them into it, eh? That's the one. No. <laughs> More you can spend then. <laughs> Absolutely. Al, pleasure talking to you, mate. Very good, Fletch. Okay, nice yep. to meet you, Zay. Mm. Good on you, buddy. Good you too. Okay. Right. Time for a sensational classic truck at this incredible event. Hello, Peter. Hiya, Fletch. How you doing, mate? Good, thanks. Good, thanks. That's good. Now, Peter, a 1945 Chev truck. You've restored this. Tell us about the history first of all. Yes, it, uh, it belonged to my uncle. Um, I bought it off him when I was 18 years old. Um, it's, it's been in the family, um, been a lout back in the uh, early days, I, I was into Mark 1 Zephyrs and all that and uh, I bought this off uh, Uncle Bert and um, I pulled it a bits and never put it back together and I think that's what saved it uh, all these years. So. Imagine, imagine the smile on Uncle Bert's face now when he's looking down, eh? You'd have, a, you'd have a smile from ear to ear. <laughs> I think it's beautiful that you've kept it, and it was your uncle's truck from, from virtually new. Uh, it's got the six-cylinder engine in it, right? Yes, it's got the blue flame engine in it. Yes, and it's all, an all-steel body I restored. It's all lead-filled joints, and it's it's done properly. Peter, you can tell that it's a Chevrolet six-cylinder too. It's like a 202 on steroids when you look at it. That's dead right. <laughs> it's, it's been juiced up a little bit, the engine. I've bought it and balanced it, and... Uh, tricked it up a little bit so it's not quite as fast as the V8s but it's it's I can stay behind them. <laughs> this is the type of truck though Peter it doesn't matter if it does 30 miles an hour flat out it just looks so amazing I mean the steel wheels the push on hubcaps even the running boards now that beautiful job there. Yes I, um, I rebuilt all those the uh, wheels were pretty sick when I um, <laughs> when I <laughs> when I uh, got it off Uncle Bert I had to get them all blasted and cleaned up so it was a so, big job. Yeah. So, so Uncle Bert had fully sick wheels, right? Oh, yeah, sure, he had sick wheels, all right. <laughs> and it caught a few fish, too. We used to go out the ca uh, coast when I was re very young. We used to put the dinghy on the back of it and uh, go way out to Purua Peninsula and catch fish in it. So. Peter, the memories that you've got, I mean, with the, your uncle's truck, those memories, this just must mean so much to oh, you. So it, 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 it means a lot to me. Yes, it does. Yeah. Peter, thank you so much for sharing this gorgeous 1945 Chevrolet truck with us. It is absolutely 
beautiful here on the paddock today. Now, I know that you're a very talented guy. You also appreciate your Euro cars. You've done an extremely clever thing to a Citroen. Now, we don't have many Citroens on classic restos. There might have been one or two in 10 years. But this car here is extremely clever. You've done a V8 engine. What else have you done to this car? Just about everything, Fletch. <laughs> um, it was a uh, going back. I bought. I wanted to go outside the square. I didn't want to copy everyone else and uh, have a Chev or a Ford or you know whatever. So um, the the chance came up to buy a Citroen, a going uh, road road car Citroen. So I bought it and uh, pulled it to bits and gave it a bit more power. Put a V8 in it and a bit more power. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> this is one guy here in Cumu that knows how to get a Citroen going. Let's drop a V8 in it. Yeah, well, it lights the back wheels up now. <laughs> so I've uh, I've done a fair bit on it. It's got a um, I've reversed the uh, drive on it. It doesn't. It's, it's not a front wheel drive now. It's a rear wheel drive. It's got a Nissan 300 ZX uh, rear suspension on it with an EL Falcon front end in it. So um, look, you've made it drivable. You've, it's a powerful car. It's tractable. Steers nice. You've got good suspension. Yes. Um, I mean, the shape is fairly cool. It's a long wheelbase car, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's a, it's the original uh, wheelbase of the Citroen. So yeah. I kept it pretty well, uh, exactly the same as what it, what they come out in. Yeah. Good on you, Peter. Look, he's the sort of guy you could talk to all day, mate. Thanks for bringing both these uh, stunning cars along here to Cumu. Uh, well done. Thank you, Fletch. Thank all you very right. much. You're Good welcome. to see you. I've seen you on TV. Oh, you have, have you? Uh, yeah. yeah. How's it, mate? Yeah. Well, you, you haven't had much on lately? No, oh, no, no. <laughs> Good on you, mate. OK, buddy. <laughs> you are watching the sensational 2017 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival, and you're seeing it first on Classic Restos. Back with more right after this. This is it. This is QMU 2017, and it attracts a big audience. People travel a long way to come to this event, and they do each and every year. How far have you travelled, mate? Uh, just down the road, Fletch. Ten minutes away. I live here, Fletch. Just three streets away, Fletch. A uh, quarter of an hour, Fletch. Yeah, just come from Reese's mum's house around the corner. I live next door to Rangi. Obviously, uh, an important section of the uh, Cumu Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival is exactly that. It does feature hot rods. Steve, welcome to today's show. How, how are you going there, Fletch? Yeah, good. Good day for it. Good, mate. Now, uh, what have we got behind us here? What year is that? Uh, it's a 38, 38 Chev. Yep. Uh, flatback. Right. A bootless model. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd just like to say one thing. Now, I have admiration for anybody that does any type of restoration, whether you go and pay the, the, the man at the shop uh, or you do it in your backyard. Now, Steve, from what I believe, I've got extra admiration here because this car, you've done exactly that. You've done it at home. You've done all the work yourself. Walk us through some of the build. Yeah, it was uh, basically found in a swamp. I got two body shelves. The bootless model was the one I wanted. But when we lifted it, the boot floor fell out. The rest of the floor fell out. There was no front, no doors. And it was, yeah, and when we picked it up, I thought, what have I done? <laughs> so yeah, we took the two of them home and um, looked at it and looked at it. And then sort of the hardest part was getting the head around it to make a start. When we look around the uh, the grill section, I mean, yeah, you've got to be you've got to be a fabricator to, to, to really perfect this sort of stuff. And again, to do it at home, I, I, I really give you 10 out of 10. The work around the grill, was that difficult? Yeah, yeah, all my front panel and everything was absolutely shot. It looked like a piece of lace. So <laughs> and my better half said it was it was actually a lace work job that I was doing. But yeah, yeah it was it was pretty rotten. Yeah. Um, lucky I'm a welder and engineer, and I thought, nah, I'm going to have a go at panel beating now. Okay. So, yeah. so I hadn't done any of it before. It just goes to show, doesn't it? You you can be a welder and an engineer, but uh, panel beating it is a different league, isn't it? Oh, I take my hat off to a lot of the good panel beaters around the place. They're yeah. magic. They yeah. really are magic. Yeah. I had a few mates throw in some ideas, yeah. and um, but no, I was pretty determined to do the whole job, start yeah. to finish on my own. Time now for the interior. Now, custom interior looks really nice. Uh, you've selected well there, I think. Uh, yeah, Fletcher. It was uh, the colours. Um, that's my better half's ideas. Mm -hmm. um, we knew roughly what we wanted to paint the outside. Mm. So yeah, then we went with the inside, and I found. Um, in Whangarei there we had a, an upholsterer that's just magic, absolutely yep. brilliant. Yep. Um, we got together with him and he, he came up with the, the colour for the inside as well yep. and the yep. materials. Yep. The only thing he's doing for me this year is he's got the seats and the door panels to do yep. for me. But no, the, the hood lining and thing he made for me from scratch and it's yep. just absolutely magic. Yeah. Now Steve, important question. Engine and drive line. Tell us what you've done there. Uh, I'm glad it can't all be seen. I've upset a few people, but um, yeah, it's a uh, 1UZ uh, Toyota Lexus engine. 
Um, but the chassis complete end to end is a Nissan Navara 1990 chassis with a GTR Skyline independent rear. Uh, all late model, I can go any store anywhere in the country and buy my parts. Now, also before I let you go, uh, you're the president of this club. Give it a plug. Tell us about your hot rod club. Yeah, no, I'm the president of the um, Whangarei Rod and Custom Club up in Whangarei there. Um, we've got 160 plus members now. It's built up over the last five years. Um, we're a real family outfit. Um, like I say, we're a custom club. We're not selective on any sort of vehicle. Young guy's got a Japanese car he's got. Hey, come along. Yeah. But we've got all sorts in the club from rotaries right through. So, Got a website? Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah, dub, 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 Ride and Custom. Um, if they go through to that, or NZHRA site, yep. they'll find us on there. there and look, these, yeah, look, it's all good. look these guys up for more information. Steve, thanks yeah, again, no mate. Worries at all. Thank you, Fletch. Thank you very much. Thanks, yeah. Well, there you have it. Just some of the amazing 2017 QMU Classic Car and Hot Rod Festival. And part two will be on next week's episode of Classic Restos. As I say at the end of every show, until next week, no matter where you're watching from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank Thank you very much for watching.